This video was sponsored by JLC PCB. This is NanoPi Duo 2, a super small single board computer. It's very similar to the Raspberry Pi Zero, but it's way smaller and can run Android. It has one USB-C port for accessories like keyboard or mouse. It doesn't have HDMI port, but it has composite video output. It also has FPC connector dedicated for camera. It uses micro SD card for storage, but it also has dedicated pins for built-in flash memory. Unfortunately, it has only 500 megabytes of RAM. It's not a lot, but Raspberry Pi Zero has pretty much the same amount. The Nano Pi Duo 2 has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. It uses all-winner H3 chip, which is quad-core and runs at 1.3 GHz. You can buy this board on AliExpress for about 25 euro. I will start my setup by connecting the screen. It's a simple 2.5 inch composite display that I've got from the thermal vision camera. I will connect it by using this simple breakout board. It's basically a headphone jack with some wires attached to it. I will solder it directly to the board and then I will use headphone jack to connect the display. The breakout board provides video signal as well as the voltage. As you can see, the screen lights up when I plug in the power. Now I will download the software directly from the NanoPi Duo website. There are many official images that you can use with this board. Each one of them has their own unique properties. I've downloaded the official friendly core image and burned it onto my SD card. With the card inside the board, I can now test it out. Most of the official images don't have the composite video output enabled by default. This basically means that when you connect the display, nothing will happen. Of course the board is still working, but you need the serial converter to actually see anything. The connector connects directly to those pins right here. After you connect one end to your board and the second one to your PC via USB, you can start software like PuTTY and connect to the NanoPi Duo board. You should now be able to see all kinds of stuff. It's a pretty basic OS, so there is no such thing as desktop or apps. But before we continue, let's order some boards. I've designed this board in Fusion 360. With the design finalized, I've exported the Gerber files, opened the JLC PCB website and ordered some prototypes. You can of course make your own changes, like solder mask color or board thickness. With all of the options selected, I've clicked save to cart and placed an order. As always, the package arrived very fast. I think it took it only one week for it to arrive to my location. Everything was safely packaged in nice blue cardboard box. The PCB bags of course arrived vacuum sealed, which prevented any moisture from getting inside. As always, all of the boards are super high quality. There is absolutely no room for errors. They are also super nice to look at. I've soldered all of the components and the board is now ready to go. And now let's go back to the OS installation. If that's not your cup of tea however, I found that you can download the Orange Pie software and run it on this board. It even works with the composite display straight away. There is no need to enable it via software. There are a couple of issues with this setup however. The main one is that this board only has one USB port which is being used to power this device. The second one is that it's not very portable since it requires USB power. And lastly, the video input jack is just dangling around. Thankfully, I already have solution for all of these problems. This is my side loader light mainboard. It has built-in battery charger, micro USB port for charging, tact switch power button and video output connector. I didn't however have had any time to charge the battery before recording this video, so I will still use external power source. I've connected everything together and you can see that it's now running Android. Now that I don't have anything connected to the USB port, I can connect my PC USB mouse. Hopefully I can emulate the touch controls this way. Ok, so it turns out it doesn't work at all, even when I use it with external USB hubs. Thankfully I found that there are dedicated USB pins on the NanoPine Duo board. I will try connecting the mouse there and see if I can get it working. So I've connected everything together and it seems that it's working now. It may be hard to tell, but I can use my mouse and it's recognized by the Android. Of course it's all in Chinese, so I can't really tell what's going on. Also the screen quality is very poor. Overall, I think I need some more time with it. But that's a topic for another video. Thanks for watching everyone and hope to see you soon. 
And as always, huge thanks to my patrons.